Hey guys, Adrian here for the Digital Dojos, and here we are taking a look at iOS 5. This is just a little pre-roll of the voiceover. We're looking at the setup here in iOS 5 when you first set up your iPad. But before I forget, I do want to mention uh, in the last giveaway I did, we announced the winners. And I promised a shout out to one of the uh, winners, and he actually sent me his link. So if you can head over to youtube.com slash urban1skater, I'm going to put a link up right now. Check out his channel. Uh, I believe he's uh, this is all technology related as well. He's a tech fan. He has a couple of videos up, so do check out his channel. Very interesting stuff. Uh, you know, a little bit of gaming videos and stuff like that. So check out his channel. Again, Urban One Skater. And I want to thank you guys for viewing this video. This is, again, the iOS 5 setup on my iPad here. Uh, this is iPad 1. Uh, I have yet to get my iPhone 4S in. I'm still waiting for it to get available here. I pre-ordered it. Um, I reserved a spot, so we're still waiting. Uh, I'm still on, you know... The queue, they're gonna, SoftBank is my provider and they're gonna call me once the phone is available. So here we are just looking in through the agreement and I was actually talking to my good friend Duncan while sending this up, Duncan Mayo, our mobile phone 2003 as you guys may know him. But uh, it was pretty flawless, pretty easy to set up. I set it up again all over Wi-Fi. I was able to restore from a backup um, and obviously everything was pretty easy to go, you can see there. Uh, it looks about the same on the iPhone if you set it up and there you go, I was into iOS 5. So with that we're gonna go into the actual overview, so stay tuned. Alright guys, Adrian here, and here we are looking at iOS 5 on the actual iPad. You guys saw a little bit of the setup process uh, and that little pre-roll into this, but this is iOS 5. I normally have about 10% of battery here because I've been using it for a while now. Uh, so I just upgraded from 4.2.1. I was actually jailbroken. I just want to talk a little bit about all the new stuff within iOS 5. Now again, this is on my iPad as I do not have my iPhone 4S in yet, and my iPhone 4 isn't currently working, so I couldn't update to 5.0. Uh, but I did want to show you guys a little bit of what's new on everything on what's new on iOS 5 altogether. So, you're going to get a little bit of different stuff on the iPad than you do on the iPhone. Uh, you are missing a little bit of stuff like Notification Center and all that jazz. But one of the new things, obviously, is you still do get the notification roll in from right here. So you can see I still get my emails uh, and my calendar events, and I can just push that back up. Uh, so all of that is now integrated in there, and I'm sure a lot of new stuff will be coming out, like widgets and stuff like that. But the iPad doesn't get like the weather widget and the stock widget. Uh, along with that, you have the new iMessages. That's the first icon we have here, and you can see I have uh, Duncan Mail and myself I was just using, using it as a test. Now, this allows me to message other iOS devices or running iMessages. So I was messaging Duncan earlier, and I, was I also added myself just to, uh, you know, to show as a test. So you can see here, there's my... Uh, message to myself and I can say something real quick so I can say test and I hit send and it sends and then automatically reply because again it's I'm um, sending this to myself obviously uh, a couple things you can do in iOS or uh, iOS 5 uh, with iMessages is obviously it's really really fast it uses Wi-Fi or if you have a uh, uh, 3G, you can use that, and you do not get charged your traditional texting. This is all free if they're, an, again, another uh, iMessage or iOS 5 device. I believe you can message cell phone numbers, but again, it will cost you. Uh, but again, through you email through email, or you message through email. So if you have their email address or Apple ID, you can just mail them. Uh, you can also send pictures, uh, and I can show you guys what that looks like. So I can message, uh, since I made a picture, I can send this do Digital Dojo's logo use and I can just hit send here and this is what a picture would look like when you send it. it would just send through and wait for it to send and once it sends through you can actually just uh, so right here and I guess I'll probably get a reply yeah I can just click on it and up will open the picture and it's easy as that now a couple things also new in, in the uh, especially in the iPad you can detach the keyboard now so right over here if you go in the bottom right oh whoops Oh, you can unlock or split it. So, this is uh, what it looks like split. This is the new interface. So, uh, imagine this. You can kind of type with your thumbs if you were uh, used to that kind of. Uh, some people type faster this way, you know, if you're used to typing like that on the iPad. Uh, so, that's splitting it. Now, unlocking it just allows you to undock the keyboard and put it anywhere you like just by moving it. So, you can move it up, down, left, right. You can have it typing up here, typing below, you know, however you want to set it. You can undock the keyboard now. So that's iMessages. Obviously, traditionally, you still have your uh, multitasking. Uh, not much has changed there on the iPad. You have your you know, traditional brightness, volume, and all that, and your apps. I actually have no apps. I went from a clean install to 5.0, so I still have to reinstall all my apps. Uh, a couple other new things you'll see here is you will see the new news. Uh, where? Sorry, about that. Newsstand. This allows you to view uh, 
you get magazine subscriptions and basically it's like the iBook store for magazines and newspapers. Uh, I'm not subscribed to any magazines, but if you do subscribe to any magazines here, I have the Popular Mechanics one, for example. Uh, you can just flip through, subscribe, or buy an issue. These ones are at three ninety nine, so four bucks. And you know, it is a nice viewing experience. I have read some magazines in the past. I use the Zinio app, uh, but that is uh, basically a newsstand. Now, one thing a lot of people complain about is you can't actually put these in a folder. So if you don't use it, you can't really put it in a folder, just because. Uh, it's its own standalone app, and Apple doesn't want you putting it in a folder because it already kind of has its own traditional folder icon on it, you can see there. Um, along with that, they also updated the new calendar app. So if you go into calendar here, you can see the traditional year view. You can see a little bit more in perspective. If you turn it to the left here, uh, you get a little nicer view, and you notice some colors and buttons and shaders and all that. They've changed a lot in iOS 5. Um, now one of the cool effects here, if you haven't seen this, you can actually just pull from the calendar in the year and you can pull like it was a piece of paper and it's really, I really love this animation because it's really spot on. I'm not sure if this is new in iOS 5, but it is very, very nice to kind of just pull through your calendar like so. It just, you can pull it left, up, down, however you want to pull it and flip through to your next calendar. Uh, so this is just my calendar right here and you can just see some of the stuff here and they highlight it when you have events on that day. Um, along with that, they also updated the, uh, I believe it was the, I want to say they got the calendars app, they got the messages app, obviously. Uh, you now have Game Center. Game Center wasn't available on the iPad. To be honest, I really don't use Game Center that much. I used to on my iPhone uh, 4 when I first had it, but uh, don't not as much recently. They also, as you can see here, they uh, split, you know, back in the day on the iPod Touches and stuff like that. They used to have music and video separated before that used to be kind of one uniform app it would just say uh, iPod now it is now music and uh, videos and you can see the music app here I don't have any music installed but the new music interface is a little bit different here your volumes up here your play pause is up here and you can actually just access the store by clicking the icon below uh, the videos app just looks like so it just has no videos but obviously you just have a library through here again I haven't installed anything on my iPad it was a clean install here um, the new app, Reminders, you can see this, Reminders is their new notifications app. Now this works better on stuff like iPhones where it has constant GPS because you can set it to remind you via location. So let's say, uh, remind me when I get home to, you know, pick up, uh, or to pick up, I don't know, whatever, you know, to pick up my suitcase or pick up my laptop or anything like that. So you can use uh, location awareness to do that. Uh, my iPad's only on the Wi-Fi, so it's not the 3G or anything like that. But you can simply add tasks by clicking the plus button. It's just really, you know, it's a reminder app or to-do app. You click up here, you type it in, and then you can set priority for it. So, for example, I have my thing here that says my get my iPhone 4S once it's available. And I can tell it to remind me on a certain day here. Um, and, you know, set the time, the date, etc. Uh, I can tell it to show more, and I can set it by priority and add some extra notes and stuff like that. And then if I complete it, I can just hit the little check mark, and I'll be good to go. So that's just you know the really simple reminders app. Um, along with that, you still have obviously access to your iTunes and App Store. Uh, a couple things also changed in Mail. You now have more of a preview. I also have iCloud now enabled. iCloud is the whole syncing between all devices app. I can't really show you much of a preview just because you need multiple devices to kind of show it off. You can you know sync a picture from your iPhone to your iPad. It just basically so you have all your devices in sync. Uh, showing a little bit of my Mail here. I know I don't want to show too much here, but um, you have now. Uh, more access to more uh, preview mails. I think you can, by default, it shows up to a thousand messages in your preview as you scroll down, but I'm not going to go through my mail here. Um, and so, yeah, that is your um, mailbox here. You can just kind of flip through. Um, and uh, it also has some new stuff with indentations and stuff like that. So, when you're writing a mail, so I can say, like, where is it? If I want to compose a new email here, I can say, uh, let's see here. This is just one of my old email accounts I really don't use anymore, so I can just pull up here. Sorry, this is a weird angle. But um, now if you hold up here in the top left, uh, aside from select and select all, you can click this little icon here, and you can add a quote level indent. So I can increase the quote level, uh, or I can decrease the quote level. This is all dealing with indentation stuff, like, or I think I believe this is dealing with indentation stuff like that. Uh, you can also, there's another way to do the actual indentation, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive on everything with the quote level and all that, but, so you can say the testing, I don't know, email, and then you can just add quote levels, and you might have seen that stuff in like Gmail and stuff like that, uh, so they add some new stuff within mail and preview and all that. Alright, so going out of here, you can also 
uh, go into Safari and I'll click in here and Safari for the iPad has new updated tabbed browsing so you can see here I'm on the Digital Dojo's homepage here and uh, I can actually click on the other tab right here in iGoogle and now we have new tabs I can also shuffle between the tabs now I can open a couple tabs here just to show you what it would look like as I click on the plus button here and just to show you the interface it is a little bit of a new interface but now you have that tabbed browsing available uh, and you can close them you can open them obviously you can change between them on the i phone it's still uh, the traditional page view just because uh, tabs would take up too much space on a really small screen so yeah it's new as well Safari along with that there's some under the hood tweaks obviously it's a little bit faster uh, I do f feel it's a little bit faster on the iPad uh, I'm sure it'd be faster on the iPhone 4s I've heard people on the iPhone 4 said it was decent but again I was coming from a I iOS I want to say 4.3 with uh, some jailbreak tweaks that made my phone really really fast uh, using Springboard or uh, S, I almost say, is it, is it called Springboard or Springtimize? That's what it's called. So, uh, iOS 5 is decently fast. And again, I don't have many apps on it at all. Going into the settings here, I can show you a little bit of news and a little bit of some stuff that's new. Um, obviously, you now have, like I said, iCloud to sync between all of your data and stuff like that. Uh, you also have new, uh, where is it here? If I go into general, yeah, I'm ready in general. You have iTunes Wi Fi sync. So now you can sync over uh, Wi Fi with your device. For example, here it shows, it shows my MacBook. So I can now sync between my, uh, you know, uh, laptop or desktop wi wirelessly. Don't need to plug it in. Uh, I just enable it and I can sync music. I can sync my data over. It's really, really nice. And a lot of people have been using that a lot lately. So you don't actually, you know, you can go cord this. Uh, and just sync it over Wi-Fi, which is something that people have been waiting for a long time to see. Uh, you also have Twitter integration now. Twitter is now uh, integrated by itself in iOS. Uh, so you get Twitter notifications through uh, Notification Center. You just have to install the app. Uh, and you put your user account in. So, for example, mine shows at KeepGuru. And, yeah, so that's all tied in now with your notifications. And you get alerts and stuff like that. Along with that, you still have some all, you know, small tweaks here and there. You can see the new... Uh, button style it's kind of like a circle now uh, for airplane mode and there's some other stuff dealing with notifications all of that there's a little bit more stuff in the iPhone you get you know a little bit more standalone apps like I said notification center and all of that but for the most part I'm pretty happy with iOS 5 it's a fresh start new clean install um, and it is you know a whole new life in your iOS device so if you have an iPod touch fourth gen iPad or iPad 2 iPhone 4, or uh, I'm not sure if they do, I think the iPhone 3GS as well, and the iPhone 4S obviously are all compatible with iOS 5. So if you've yet to update, go ahead and update. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the new jailbreak that is out, the tethered jailbreak for iOS 5. So that's the video coming up next. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. For more coverage, head over to digitaldojos.com. Thanks, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.